Hey guys, so to start off this episode, um, I think we're going to get invaded by an NPC, and this guy is part of uh, Yura's quest line, where he's this samurai dude that you find throughout the world, and he'll tell you not to go to a heel lake, excuse me, he'll tell you not to go there because of the dragon, um, but we already went there and killed him, so we're going to go get invaded by this guy. Now I am going to put on some armor, because the... I forgot what his name is. Bloody Finger Narius, I believe. He deals bleed damage, uh, as you probably guessed from his name. And because we're not wearing any clothes, he'll proc bleed like within like a single hit on us if he does his Ash of War. And I believe that'll just insta kill us. So yeah, I'm gonna put some armor on here. I think the best early game armor is the scaled set. And you get that from completing the first mission of the Volcano Manor. And once we get to Mount Gelmer, I'll show you where Volcano Manor is. Yeah, so it forces you off the horse because you're about to get invaded. And he should be spawning right up ahead here. Nera just, yeah, okay. So, if you take too long to kill him... Yura will spawn in your game and help you out. Um, So we get the Reduvia for completing that. And the second reason why I wanted to do this invasion was because not only do you kill him, you get the Reduvia and you progress your quest questline. It's already, what, three birds, one stone. Uh, the, the fourth bird is you get to enter, what is this, Murkwater Cave or something? Yeah, Murkwater Cave. You get to enter this cave, which is right here, and you encounter a secret boss. Let's turn on the lantern here. Now coming up in this room here, or opening, it's a trap. There are going to be some bells on the floor. So try not to trigger them. Because they'll alert the gank squad that's down here. Oh, great. insta -pulled. That was totally planned. I definitely knew that was there. Yeah. I think this is just cotton that's in this chest anyway. So. Mushroom. Okay, yeah. Alright, now we're not going to buff up for this guy because some of you may know who this is, but they don't require that much damage. So you come here. Well, well, well. Thought you'd just help yourself to a man's personal belongings, huh? <laughs> you steaming little thief. Yeah, so if any of you guys have played a From Software game before, you'll definitely recognize this Joker. Damn, he almost killed me. Okay, yeah, so this is a unique, I say boss, but it's like a quote unquote boss because this is actually an NPC disguised as one. So if you get him down to uh, less than half health, he'll do that. And you can choose to spare him because he becomes a merchant later on. Right, so 
you choose to forgive him only because you want him as a merchant later, you can kill him outright. Um, but you just won't be able to buy his stock, of course. Or actually, no. I think you can give his bell bearing to the maiden at the round table hold. Um, but I always choose to spare him just because. Definitely strategic. also another strategic poisoning. Okay, so you rest at the grace, go back to him. And he may have already moved because I have I have the volcano manor unlocked already. Let me just go check where this guy is. He might have just moved there. I believe he's outside the main plaza. Yep, there he is. Okay. Yeah, so if you have already gotten the Volcano Manor, um, he'll have moved here. The manor. I don't believe it. All good, though. We'll do good. Oh, and of course, it's important. Yeah, so here's all his items. The only real important thing here, well, I guess there's two. Um, well, three, rather. The cookbook, you should always pick up cookbooks on your first run because those will expand your crafting repertoire, um, as it says there. The gold pickled fowl feet, because those increase your rune gain, so it's good for farming. And of course, market shackle uh, briefly binds market once imprisoned to earth. Now what this does is, like it says on the item card, you'll buy it from him, put it in your inventory, and you'll pop it like any other item. And when you're fighting market, uh, it will... It will briefly like bind him to the ground so you'll be able to get in some free hits. I personally won't use it for this run just because it's a challenge run. Um, but you know, for a, a first level or a first run through, it's pretty decent. After dealing with patches, we're gonna take on the first of many Tibia Mariners. And he's located right here in the northern part of Limgrave. Now, like I said before, he's a skeleton type enemy, so we're going to use the golden epitaph here. And we're also going to need to use the two fingers heirloom to wield it properly and two hand, of course. So, but first let's buff up. So, before we start, let's do our Flask of Wonders Physic, Golden Bow, and there we go. So, these guys are pretty much jokes. Um, their only real thing you gotta worry about is them disappearing, and they do summon in, like, giant skeletons. The minor skeletons you don't have to worry too much about. I mean, if you can hit the guy, he's a, he's a joke, but if you can't hit him, I guess that's a big problem. <laughs> or a me problem. Yeah, so once you kill him, all of his miniature skeletons despawn. One of the last things I did want to show before uh, taking on Margit, one of the main bosses here in Limbrave, is I did want to show the first artist shack we'll come across, which is also in Limgrave here. Now you're going to first come across this side of Grace that's along the cliffside of this ravine here. can see the golden glow. Okay, so we're going to activate it here. And the artist shack is going to be directly in front of us. So to get there, summon torrents. And we're going to need to double jump, rather. Oh, didn't make it. We're going to double jump across. Jump up here. And there's the artist shack. Now these are important because they house the paintings and each painting will correspond to a hidden treasure throughout the entire game. So what we'll do here is, right, we'll find a shack, examine the painting, homing instinct painting. So now based on that picture right there of the, you see the archway and the tombstone and the urgery in the background, we have to find that exact image somewhere in the world. Now, of course, I know where everything is, but, um, you know, if, if you don't know, obviously on a first playthrough, you're going to be kind of racking the entire area of Limgrave. 
and they each correspond to like their dedicated area. So like the one in Kalid, the painting in Kalid, you'll find the treasure in Kalid, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, the other thing is there are a couple Saint Trina lilies. There's three, I believe. Yeah. So those, of course, always will pick those up for sleeping pots. But yeah, the paintings they do correspond to your rare and unique treasure. So, you know, if you're a completionist like me, you'll want to pick them up um, on your first playthrough. You don't need to do them over again on subsequent playthroughs because the rewards are exactly the same and it's just no point in doing it over. Back at the Stormhill Shack, we're going to attempt to mark it. So after running around Limgrave for what felt like a decade and doing odds and ends, NPC quests, field bosses, and ever jails, we're finally going to start our first boss. Now, Margit isn't a rune, or not rune, a shard bearer. He's not a shard bearer. He is a mandatory boss, though. Um, well, actually, even that's incorrect. So technically, you can skip him if you know what you're doing. You can skip the entirety of Stormville Castle, um, but like many other things, you're probably not going to know that and do that on your first playthrough. It's going to be something you'll find out later. So you don't need to fight the guys at the gate front. They'll just take up your time and wear down your resources. All you do is get that little side site of grace. Now, <laughs> as you can guess through these gates is Margit. Now, um, you can summon Sorcerer Rajair for this fight, but yeah, no, I'm not going to. This is going to be a solo summonless run. So like always, Flask of Wonders Physic, Golden Bow, Drink Cerulean Tears, alright. So I think I'll play the entire cutscene only the first time. Right, now this guy has a bunch of delayed attacks. He is the king of delayed attacks. So what I'm going to be doing here is probably baiting out... Oh, fuck. Oh, wow, it's still gone. Because I'm probably going to be baiting out a ton. Okay, so he's going to probably throw a dart at me. Yep. Okay, it could have been a hitless run, but it was not. Right. So, yeah. Um, like I said there before in earlier episodes, the animation reading, as soon as I drank from the Cerulean Tear, he instantly threw a dart at me. So, yeah. I guess I could have dodged it um, at the last second to have a truly hitless run, but you know, it's whatever. I don't really care that much. Uh, and I guess after I complete every boss, I'll give them a bit of a rating. So, in the case of Margit, he's pretty much there to fuck with like old school souls vets because of his delayed attacks. Um, I just realized I killed him so quickly. I didn't. Come over here, would you? I killed Margit so quickly. I didn't do the best at showing his move set. Um, okay, <laughs> something to note in the future. Well, actually, I doubt I'll be killing bosses that easily in the future. But yeah, I shouldn't have killed him so quick because his move set is it's pretty decent. Anyways, moving on. After Margit, you come to this guy, Gatekeeper Gostock. You, you, I would it tightly go. You breach the so what I like doing is he gives you the option to sneak around on the outside to our left through a hole in the wall. 
Uh, you can do that. I like doing the main gate, um, just so that we have the option later. So what happens is, you can either go through that hall or that doorway, right? But I like choosing the main gate option just so he opens the gate, because if I don't do this, the gates. Open the gates. if I don't have Gostock yell for them to open the gates, I'll have to open it myself. And the reason why I have him open it is because I would have to complete the entire castle and then go back and open it manually. So, you know, um, you can do either. I'm personally going to go out the side, but I do like having both options. So when we go out the side here, it's a pretty straightforward trek, right? And this is the first legacy dungeon of the game, being Stormville Castle. So we come up this crumbling looking part, this like inner wall here. And uh, this is not a platformer, so, you know, I don't know why From Software keeps adding jumping sections sections in their game and traversal like that, because platforming is not their strong suit, to say the least. Right, so here is the second grace. And I think we'll cut it here.